about a quarter of an hour before. Why? I am the housekeeper, Mr. Holmes. I try to keep the study as clean and as tidy as possible. Not that you'd notice the difference. Were you alone in here? I was alone. I never come in here when the professor's at work. As far as I know, Mr. Smith was upstairs in his room at the time. So you didn't see him at all? Not until after he... He was... Been... I'd finished my housework in here. And I was preparing the professor's lunch. When I heard... <coughs> By the time I reached the study... Mr. Smith was dead. Then you were obviously too late to hear his last words. I heard nothing except that dreadful cry. Wake up, constable! What did you do then? I went straight to the professor's room. He was horribly agitated. He'd heard enough to know that something terrible had happened. Did you dust this bureau this morning? I did. Did you observe the scratch by the lock? I did not. Of course you didn't, Mrs. Marker. Your duster would have swept away those scraps of varnish. And where's the key? The professor keeps it on his watch chain. At all times? At all times. Good, 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 I good, have good, to good, see good, the good, lunch good. Inspector. We're making progress. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Marker. Would you be so good as to ask the housemaid to come along to the study? Certainly, Inspector. Let us see what this desk reveals. Ah, uh, Mycroft, this is interesting. What is it? An entry for today in Willoughby Smith's handwriting. Abby, 7.30? How curious. Mm. I think I can answer that one for you, sir. Professor Coram is writing a book about early Christian heretics, and there are a number of Abbey ruins within reasonable travelling distance of the house. Well, Abby, 7.30? Why 7.30? Miss Dalton, please come in. Please sit down. Mr. Holmes is a detective from London. Would you tell him everything you saw and heard yesterday morning? It was between 11 and 12. Professor Cron was still in bed. But when the weather is poor, he seldom rises before midday. Mrs. Marker was busy with some work in the kitchen. some curtains in one of the bedrooms upstairs. Mr. Smith had been in his own room. At that moment, I heard him walk along the passage and descend to the study. How can you be sure that it was Willoughby Smith? Because he had a familiar tread, sir. I didn't hear the study door close. And a minute or so later, came a dreadful cry. It was a wild, hoarse scream. So strange and unnatural. Could have come either from a man or a woman. I ran down to the study. Found Willoughby lying on the floor. Saw the blood. I didn't realise. Must be dead. And then he spoke. It was she. The professor, it was she. Yes. Curious words. Do you know what they mean? No, oh, sir. Are you sure? No, sir. I mean... <laughs> Could anyone have left by the rear exit after the time you'd heard the scream? 
Even before I got down the stairs, I'd have seen them in the passage. And the back door never opened before I would have heard it. Thank you, Miss Talton. Mycroft, Inspector. Perhaps he was the victim of a lover's quarrel. A very tiresome for the man. It's nearly midday. Will the professor still be in his room? Yes, he hasn't left it since yesterday morning. Then you must introduce me. Ah. What is it, Mr. Holmes? Both corridors are lined with coconut matting. You noticed. <laughs> Thank you, sir. What of it? It seems to me to be suggestive. Indeed. Close the door, Hopkins. The cold air won't help my bronchial condition. <coughs> One of you gentlemen must be Sherlock Holmes. This is my brother, Mycroft. You a smoker, Mr. Holmes? I have a few other vices. Huh? Alexandrian. Yeah. Pray take a cigarette. Thank you. I have them especially prepared by Ionides. Sends me a thousand at a time. I grieve to say that I have to arrange a fresh supply every fortnight. You, sir. Uh, thank you, no, I, I prefer this. Tobacco and my work. That's all that is left of me. Tobacco and my work. Now, I read tobacco. Who could have foreseen such a terrible catastrophe? I assure you, Mr. Holmes, that after, what, just a few months training he was, he was an admirable assistant. What do you think of the matter? I have not yet made up my mind. I would indeed be indebted to you if you could throw a light where all is dark to us. Such a blow might paralyze him to a poor old bookworm, invalid like myself. Could you not continue with your work, Professor? Alas, Mr. Holmes, I seem to have lost the faculty of thought. Oh, dear. My magnum opus. My analysis of documents found in the Coptic monasteries of Syria and Egypt. It is a work that I hoped would cut deep at the very foundations of revealed religion. This looks impressive. But with my enfeebled health, I don't know that I shall ever be able to complete it without my assistance. I don't want to trouble you with a lengthy examination. Simply to ask you what Willoughby Smith meant by his last words. The professor, it was she. Susan. A country girl, Mr. Holmes. You must be aware of the incredible stupidity of that class. <laughs> I fancy the poor fellow murmured some incoherent words and she twisted them into a meaningless message. You've no explanation yourself of the tragedy. Possibly. I breathe this only among ourselves. Possibly suicide. Young men have their hidden troubles, Mr. Holmes. An affair of the heart, perhaps, which we have never known. It's a more probable supposition than murder. 
And what of the pince nez? A fan, a glove, eyeglasses. Who knows what article may be carried as a token or treasured when a man puts an end to his life. I must get out of here. Possibly I speak as a child. Seems to me Willoughby Smith met his fate by his own hand. Willoughby Smith was murdered. He did not commit suicide. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, I agree. So the professor's theory has no bearing on the case. Would you be good enough to arrange carriage and escort for me as far as the railway station? Of course, sir. I have to go back to town, so I'll take you there myself. You're very kind. I think you might find this more beneficial than Alexandrian tobacco. Remember what Papa used to tell us when we were young? Eliminate the impossible and whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. I forget his exact words, but those are near enough. See you in London. My ideas. I'm overlooking something when it's staring me in the face. Bad news, I'm afraid, sir. There isn't another train for Charing Cross until late this evening. You should double-check the railway timetable before dragging me to this wretched place. I know, sir, and I'm sorry, sir. Just a minute, Inspector. London can wait. I think we should postpone our trip for a little while to attend a political meeting. We hear of reform after reform. Encourage these women, Mr. Holmes. They're troublemakers, no better than criminals. Organizer, Miss Abigail Crosby. Meeting. Just held in the church hall at half past seven o'clock. Think back, Inspector. Willoughby Smith's diaries. Abbey, seven thirty. Do you mind? Thank you, gentlemen, for your sensitivity. We hear of reform after reform. And yet still, nothing is done to improve the position of women in society. <coughs> the fate of our country is still being decided by men alone. And yet women, who are subjected daily and equally to the laws of the land, are not permitted to vote. That must be, Miss Abigail Crosby. Formidable. Votes for women, indeed. Whatever next? Women police? Women politicians? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you again! Bruce! The struggle Bruce. for female enfranchisement oh, has so far God been a peaceful forbid. one. The time has come when we must ask ourselves how much longer this state of affairs can continue. How much longer we should allow ourselves to be treated like second-class citizens. You tell them, Abigail! Bobby yeah. Cock. I would Bobby like to read to you a letter which I received two days ago from Mrs. Garrett Fawcett urging us to continue the fight until we achieve our aims. That should interest you, Inspector. Well, well, well. On every side, those in a position to help are stricken by deafness. We're told that the country has more important things to worry about than votes for women. But tell me, what can be more important than the rights of half of the population? Was the late Queen not also a woman? I've had quite enough of the criminal classes for one day, Inspector. Where's that carriage you promised? 